Hello everyone, this is your host, Professor Reha. This video is late because I recorded this one time and it was not up to my personal standards, so here we have round two. Now, the Reaper class, which this, by the way, is a broad overview of the Reaper class, the Nightblade Necromancer combination. This is for those who are looking to improv the class, don't have any items for the class, and are looking to play with it for the first time, or alternatively, are looking to get some ideas for their own builds. With that being said, if you don't have any items for this, this is actually one of the very few classes that I generally approach without any kind of specific idea in mind. The primary reason for this is two reasons. One is that because the Nightblade does not have any particular kind of actual exclusive skill and does not have any support for pets at all, you really are only primarily looking at one exclusive skill, which is the Harbinger of Souls. Now, that's not to say you can't do a pet build, but you have to do a pet build rather specifically. If you are going to run full pets with the Reaper, there are a couple of attached conditions. One is that you really probably should be melee. I'm going to explain that in a minute. But if you're going to go full pets with the Reaper, you almost 100% want to be melee. There are a couple of reasons for this. First off, first and foremost, is the... Skeletons primarily do vitality and physical damage, all right? That's the first thing of note. Yes, there's elemental damage here. That mostly applies to the fire mages, which you cannot enhance the fire mages elemental damage. You just, they do fire damage. You're just not going to be able to do that. But running the skeletons, you will be building spectral binding and spectral wrath. You are basically acting as an aura to counter enemies that are resistant to vitality and physical, because that is what your skeletons are going to be doing. This also will increase the dur not the durability, the lifespan of your melee skeletons because it decreases enemy attack speed. This also allows you to do damage just by standing there. So that's the first thing that you should be aware of. The second thing that is rather important is the Blight Fiend, which you're going to be using, again, as a primarily as a tank. You could go with Unstable Anomaly, that is acceptable, but I personally prefer to run the Blight Fiend with the full skills here, going all the way out to Blight Burst. Alright, now at this point, you should be looking to get Veil of Shadow Knight's Chill, because this will decrease the Poison Acid resistance for your delightful Blight Fiend, which is somewhat important. Furthermore, this gives you a few options for you personally. I'm going to explain that in a minute. However, it is at this particular point that you now have to make choices. I'm going to actually f fully invest these points in here so you can actually see how many points we're actually playing with, right? This is a full pet build with a Reaper. This is not how I would normally play this. I actually only recommend this if you are rather experienced with either pet usage or with the Reaper in general, but you can see you don't have a whole lot of points. Now keep in mind that we won't be going all the way to full Nightblade here because that's just illogical. But you now have a couple of different choices for what skills you want to personally invest in. Essentially, you have... There, there are... Let me, let me put it this way. There are two that I primarily choose. The first one is Amarasta's Blade Burst. So we're actually going to go all the way back here, okay? All the way back. We're only going to be investing 15 points leveling up the Nightblade. We're going to put points into Amarasta's Blade Burst, which you can absolutely do. Go into Lethal Assault. That's fine. Or, alternatively, you could go into Bone Harvest. I personally have a mild preference for Amarasta's Blade Burst for two very specific reasons. First off, Amrasta's Blade Burst does exactly the kinds of damage that Knight's Chill does. So Knight's Chill will allow your Amrasta's Blade Burst to do more damage. Second off, it freezes enemies. So this gives your pets an even better survivability than they had before, which is amazing. Third, and most importantly, you have some leftover points that you can invest in Pneumatic Burst and put the remainder of your points in Phantasmal Armor if you choose, or if you're having a really hard time keeping your pets alive, maybe you go into Ill Omen 
to scare away the enemies, reduce their damage, confuse them. It's a fairly nice piece of crowd control. It's not the best, because you can't quite chain this, but it is a pretty good investment. It's a very acceptable piece of crowd control. But this is generally what I prefer to run, because this does give me the self-heal. I can go into Phantasmal Armor if I want, or if I feel like it, I can go into Shadow Dance. It's a matter of personal preference. Both will achieve roughly the same idea, which is keeping you alive longer. You could invest a point in Breath of Belgothian if you wanted to dual-wield some single-hand melee weapons, which, depending on what items you have, could be very helpful. Two uh, Mythical Deadbeaters, for example, would be quite potent, as an example. It's one of the few times I'll reference specific items in this series. We'll get onto items in future videos, of course. But it is something that I usually will go for, because these two work together very well. They increase your Blight Fiend, and then you have the Spectral Wrath boosting the damage output of your Skeletons. Alternatively, instead of all of this absolutely delicious damage output you can instead go for the slightly less effective Bone Harvest. And it's only slightly less effective, not necessarily because of anything specifically you're doing, but just because, personally, it uses a lot more... It just uses a lot more points to get out to the Soul Harvest portion where you're actually increasing the damage, which is fine. I do generally recommend this if you are insistent on using a two-handed weapon because you can convert that physical damage to cold damage, which you are decreasing through Night's Chill, which means you're doing even more cold damage. It's uh, taking the effect of that resistance. Yes, you are reducing physical resistance here and attack speed, but the Reaper combination, by and large, has more cold damage weapons than plain physical damage weapons at the higher levels. It's either going to be Aether, it's going to be... Vi Vitality is a very common damage output for um, artifacts for the Reaper. Cold damage is very common. There is some physical, it's just there's either cold or vitality. Uh, if you do wind up with a physical weapon, obviously don't go with Harvester of Death, but this does increase the damage of this by 20%, which is fairly nice. So it is worth considering if you have a two-handed melee weapon and you still have eight points left over that you can put into Pneumatic Burst if you choose. It's just, this isn't going to heal you as much, and ultimately, while this can theoretically do roughly the same amount of damage, you're decreasing, pier you're doing piercing, you're doing cold, you're doing vitality, you're reducing vitality resistance here, you're reducing pierce and cold damage here, it doesn't freeze enemies, which is a bit unfortunate, so it doesn't have quite the survivability effect of your Amaras' Blade Burst, and furthermore, this is a 3 second skill recharge, this is a 1.8 second skill recharge. I mean, just statistically, you can pop off an Amorasta's Blade Burst quite a bit more frequently. And if you decide to go into ranged, Amorasta's Blade Burst, if you decide to go into ranged for whatever reason, which you can, doing a ranged pet build with Reaper is possible. It's just not quite as effective. You do, in fact, have the option of firing this off from range. Um, again, I don't really recommend doing this with range unless you have specific equipment for that, which we will again cover in the future, but this is generally how I approach a full pet build with the Reaper. This is about the only specific build I'm going to get into because using the other exclusive skill, you are really free to mix and match as much as you like, essentially speaking, and this is going to depend on what equipment you either find or have already lying around, whichever one you prefer. But when you're not looking at pets at all, then you are looking at a completely different conversation. Even should you decide to go into heavily auto attacks, you can still splash in some skills pretty easily and vice versa, but you're pretty much almost always going to be looking at Harbinger of Souls. Whether or not you want to fully take advantage of that is entirely up to you. You can go into some pretty nice cold damage boosts if you so choose. But don't be afraid of having a lot of fun with this. But what I usually do with the Reaper, and I'm running this not pets, I'll usually run Anatomy of Murder, Phantasmal Blades with Frenetic Throw, go to at least Heartseeker. I don't normally go to Nether Edge. It's a lot of point investment over there. Not a bad thing, but it's not necessary to actually make this functional, especially with frenetic throw. You can just spam these all day and have a grand old time. So don't feel obligated to go into Nether Edge if you don't want to. It's entirely your choice. Ring of Steel, though, is a great thing, especially with Circle of Slaughter. 
I sometimes use, especially if I'm melee. If I'm ranged, I'm probably not actually going to invest in this at all. But if I'm melee, this is really nice. And finally, sometimes if I'm feeling spicy, I'll go into Shadow Strike the full way. If I'm melee, I'm almost certainly going into this. Um, some Well, I won't say almost certainly, because there are actually plenty of times where I haven't run Shadow Strike with melee weapons. It really depends upon what equipment I have and what isn't being enhanced and what isn't. Uh, pneumatic Burst, of course, is always worth considering. But besides all of this, another extremely potent ability is in fact Siphon Souls because this does both vitality and bleeding damage and in fact this is one of my favorite skills to use with the Reaper because it does exactly those two damage types plus the vitality bonus from Harbinger of Souls and you've got yourself a delicious recipe actually my two favorite skills for this combination is Phantasmal Blades under Frenetic Throw and good old Siphon Souls absolutely fantastic in these particular cases, again, I will usually run Spectral Wrath if I am melee. But what if I'm ranged, Professor? What then? Well, if you're ranged, you're looking at this a little bit differently. Actually, looking at this considerably differently. You are instead not necessarily going to go into Harbinger of Souls. You still can, but if you're going to go ranged, you don't have a whole lot of options. A lot of these, well, all of the auras for the Reaper are specifically for melee intentions. So if you're going ranged, your ideal approach to this is actually Merciless Repertoire, going into Amaras' Blade Burst into Lethal Assault, Nomadic Burst, of course, and then you're going to go into Ravenous Earth, and at that particular point, Reaping Strike as well is extremely potent, and Necrotic Edge, because at this particular point, you're just trying to do as much damage as you can and keep the enemies away from you as much as possible. Now, it's not a bad idea, if you are ranged, to run a Blight Fiend with or without Unstable Anomaly. You totally your choice, but it's not a bad idea to run Blight Fiend because he'll absolutely generate a lot of attention from enemies. And with just the freezing from Amrasta's Blade Burst, you can lock them down with Rotting Fumes. You don't necessarily need Blight Burst. I usually will build it. If I'm going to go into the Blight Fiend for tank purposes, I'm going to go into this anyways, because generate additional threat. Yes, please. But it's not necessary. But what you do really want, if you are going to go into Blight Fiend at a bare minimum, if you're ranged, is Rotting Fumes. Because you can then freeze the enemy in the range of these fumes, and your Blight Fiend will just do damage over time, and it's absolutely delicious, and then you can throw down a Ravenous Earth, and just have that belching all over them, and then you just shoot away as you please, and obviously, if you're running only these abilities, including Merciless Repertory, you're going only down to 32 points, so you have plenty of points left over from that perspective as well. So... Do keep that in mind. Now, what if you want to go full auto attack? What if, right? So, if you're going full auto attack, obviously you're going to have dual blades. Great. And you're going to run these. You're going to run Merciless Repertoire. And then at this point, it's kind of your choice how you want to approach it from here. I usually will go into Reaping Strike. I'll usually go into Harbinger of Souls because I want that increased attack speed. Uh, sometimes I'll go into Necrotic Edge, uh, sometimes I'll go into Spectral Binding and Spectral Wrath, not quite as necessary, but it can be nice, it depends on how you really feel about it, but you really are basically running all of these, this, Nematic Burst, and these as you please, maybe you go into this. Maybe you drop Harbinger of Souls, you go into Spectral Binding and Spectral Wrath instead for the decrease in physical resistance if you want to. I mean, I would rather have Harbinger of Souls, personally, but that's my own personal preference. I am aware of that. So, these are a lot of the ways that I run this. Now, there's a fun little fact that you can actually really utilize quite effectively. That This is a combination that I have discovered that I don't remember anyone actually talking about ever, so I don't know if this is something that Reaper mains, I guess I would describe them as, typically do, but it has occurred to me, and I have tested this and this works really well, but it has occurred to me that Blade Trap, alright, plus Anatomy of Murder, plus Drain Essence, whether or not you go into Grave Chill is totally up to you, I usually do, but not necessarily, well, I'll talk about that in a minute, a minute, but 
Drain Essence, all the way to Decomposition, plus Blade Trap and Devouring Blades. Now, let me max these out for a bit here, so you can truly understand the glorious scope of this. Alright? Give me a second, just max everything here. Alright, so... Consider, you throw down a Blade Trap, right? You trap an enemy, they're trapped for 4 seconds. They're taking all of these this damage. You know, you're you're healing off of these enemies here, right? You're trapping multiple enemies because it's a 1.5 meter radius, so you're potentially trapping multiple enemies. You're enhancing the vitality and bleed damage on this, right? So you're doing all of this pierce and bleed right here already, and then you do even more pierce. You do vitality damage. You do more bleeding damage here, and then on top of that, you are draining their life at the same time. Aether vitality damage. Uh, multiple targets, potentially, extra conversion, some crit damage, more vitality damage, alright? They're trapped for four straight seconds. This assumes you don't have an item that increases that. There's a couple out there, which is nice, but you're they're stuck, and you're just standing there draining their life. If you want to go really gung-ho, you go into Amaras' Blade Burst, or alternatively, you go into Ill Omen, which will theoretically give you a bit of breathing room there. Potentials, but not strictly necessary, but at the core, Drain Essence plus Blade Trap is quite the interestingly potent combination. Now, there are a couple of accessories, and the reason why I wasn't heavily talking about Grave Chill is because whether or not you go into Grave Chill depends on whether or not you're investing in Harbinger of Souls. This will increase the amount of attack damage you convert to health. This does give you some bonus vitality damage, which is going to be enhanced by the, what is this called again? The Anatomy of Murder. And furthermore, it enhances Aether damage, so you don't want to lose this Aether damage. It doesn't seem like a lot of Aether damage, but it still will be boosted, which is still a little bit more attack damage being converted to health. So you do have that, and if you're feeling extremely bold in the spice, you're going into Ravenous Earth all the way, and then what you're basically doing is throwing down a Ravenous Earth in front of you, between you and the enemy, before you Blade Trap. And then when the enemies reach the Ravenous Earth, you Blade Trap them, and then you start draining their life. Alright, if you want to really double down, you go into Siphon Souls, which, by the way, for reference, is useful across the board, even with auto-attack builds, because this actually is a click and it lasts 3 seconds. It's not something you hold down like Drain Essence. And then you run Blood Boil, and if you're feeling... Again, really spicy. You can go to Spectral Wrath. Maybe you want to go into Phantasmal Blit Armor. Maybe you want to get a bit of additional healing through Nomadic Burst. Totally up to you. But it is a very interesting time. and it, You don't necessarily have to run it specifically that way. Uh, I didn't actually max this, which I should have. But it doesn't really make a difference because I'm just kind of showing you a couple of different options that you can run with the Blade Trap. I don't often talk about the Blade Trap because it is not often that I find myself enjoying the use of it. It's... Not as useful as it sounds on the surface for most classes, but for the Reaper, there is a lot of potential here. It's the Reaper and the... The Occultist one, the Nightblade Occultist, that can really effectively use the Blade Trap. I don't often bust out the Blade Trap in a lot of other scenarios. There are some specific scenarios with specific pieces of equipment that I'll run this with, but the Reaper is, I think, the best usage of this because there's a lot of overlap in the bleeding and vitality damage combination there. Finally, before I conclude this, I want to also point out that no matter what you do, Blade Spirit is always worthwhile. Pierce damage, cold damage, and bleeding damage, no matter how you build, this is going to be fairly effective, but it's not going to be one of your most effective tools. This is only if you happen to be that far up in level anyways, and you have some points to kill, why not grab some Invincible Blade Spirits for the kicks? I don't often build this, because it's not dedicated to any one particular damage type, it just kind of intersperses itself through three different ones that you can enhance, so it's a bit tough to really capitalize on that. It is nice if you need to mix up your damage types, but as is inherent with the Nightblade anyways, you really don't need to go that far to diversify your damage range. And especially with the inclusion of Aether damage from the Necromancer, which is just another another damage type you can stack on top of that. And you have enough diversity of damage types that no one enemy is going to resist all of the damage types that you do very effectively. So you're always going to have some form of damage that's going to be a decent enough response to some enemy somewhere. 
So it's not really a huge concern if you encounter an enemy that's resistant to a particular damage type. Even if you're focusing pretty heavily on one damage type over another, you still have enough enhancements to some other damage type that's totally different that your enemy is unlikely to be extremely resistant to you, or that resistant to you at all. But you may have noticed that I haven't really heavily focused on spe more specific builds. That's just how the Reaper works, at least for me, from the way I play it. I just generally tend to make it up as I go along. This is a very interesting class to improv, because there just really is so much that can coordinate quite effectively. You don't even need to go full pets if you don't want to. If you want to splash in some skeletons because you happen to be doing some kind of uh, a skill that enhances them, for example, maybe you pick up an item that enhances Bone Harvest, right? And you really like Bone Harvest. You're really, you know, vibing with it. It feels great. You, go, you get the Soul Harvest and you're like, well, it would be a shame to waste the pet bonus splash in some skeletons. Maybe you don't want the skeletons. That is vitality damage, and don't look, Blight Burst does vitality damage. Maybe you want some spicy Blight Fiends. Maybe you want to use Unstable Anomaly. Go for it. I mean, there's just because there's no support for pets in the Nightblade doesn't necessarily mean that you can't splash some pets in there. You just have to be careful about not dedicating too much in the way of your equipment to pets. That would really be my only word of caution here, is unless you're going 100% pet, don't equip anything that enhances pets. Focus on yourself first and use your minions as a kind of damage sponge or or something to attract enemy attention a little bit away from you so you can really focus in on some individually strong target, which is what the Nightblade really excels at, is taking a single target down very quickly. Think of your pets as a way of drawing attention away from you so you can do that and essentially force a 1v1 even in the middle of a crowd. Your skeletons and or your blade fiend are absorbing enemy attention, the, the smallest attention, and you're focusing on the boss or the hero or the nemesis. You're forcing that crowd of enemies to divert its attention to other enemies, and you are taking on the big guy. So that would be really all I would have to say about the Reaper, it, like I said, there's no specific build. You can mix and match a lot of these very easily and very effectively, uh, other than a full pet build, which you kind of have to be dedicated to in order to make that work. Just be careful with pets. Don't go overboard on them unless you either are going 100% or you're going the bare minimum here. Just be very careful with them. You have to th think very carefully to yourself, would a the splashing of the skeletons and or the blight fiend help my build will this fulfill some purpose that i cannot achieve currently with the way my equipment is or with the way my skills are and then you go for it if you, that answer is yes these perform some specific function so with that being said thank you all very much for joining me thank you all very much for supporting me and for your patience uh, i enjoy making videos for you all and if you did like this please like and subscribe if you didn't please ignore me and if you have any comments, questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, what have you, please leave them down in the comment section below. And have a great 24 hours.